Creole oil and algae oil don't have ALA. We do want to make sure we have ALA in our omega-3 supplementation to make all three, to have all three, ALA, EPA and DHA. Creole oil contains EPA and DHA and algae contains DHA. Both are missing the ALA. Besides that, creole oil comes from very cold arctic places on earth and therefore the oil is designed by nature to be in extremely cold water or cold environment which means it is going to be highly unstable when it is introduced into the human body which is tropically hot. Our, our hot-blooded nature will make sure that any omega-3 fatty acids, DHA and EPA, will have a very high percentage of those acids going rancid within our system. Of course we also have to be concerned about harvesting of marine animals and what it would do and how it will impact the ecosystem especially in marine life that depends on the krill. Um, and it is a fairly new type of omega-3 source that has not been thoroughly studied enough in every aspect of it and of course you will always get some benefit from the omega-3 content but if in the long run you start suffering the gradual effects of cumulative rancidity that would lead to cellular aging that people are never talking about. It takes years and years and nobody studies the long-term effect of rancid fatty acids on your system but we do know from scientific research in the area of molecular biology and biochemistry that every time you are exposed to rancid fats or create them inside your own body you are degrading your own cellular membrane, your own internal organs within the cell so you stop manufacturing energy, you stop having membrane protection and stability and the cell starts dying in an orchestrated organized fashion we don't want to cause that and therefore we have to make sure we avoid rancid fats we have to avoid rancid oil that are designed in nature to be in cold temperature. That's the problem with creole oil, the main problem. With algae it can be grown in warm climates as well so that problem might not be relevant although we have a lot of DHA and almost only DHA which means we have to convert it backwards into EPA and a little bit into ALA it is not as efficient to do that when in nature we would have never been able to collect a large amount of algae anywhere they are microscopic we wouldn't be able to harvest a huge amount and their oil we would have been able to eat a lot of seeds if we wanted to and if they were available but algae gives us just DHA and we are missing the ALA and that's really important besides that uh, we don't know how stable the DHA will be when we ingest it. It will be beneficial, it will incorporate itself into our cellular membranes, but there is a potential risk that other things came into the oil because not all algae comes from clean water. If the water is polluted, that pollution will end up in the fatty acids. If it's a clean source of algae, DHA, I don't have much to say against it. It might be beneficial, but it is not enough. You still need to get an ALA source because in the human uh, biology, we know that almost all the, the omega-3 fatty acids that go into the baby, that go into the uterus, that go through the breast milk, it's always almost ALA and not the other types of omega-3 fatty acids. So we need to make sure we get the ALA even if we decide to take algae-based DHA.